Hindu American Foundation opposes anti-caste discrimination policy. On January 21st, the Hindu American Foundation, or HAF, or HAF for short, demanded to remove the recent uh, addition of caste to the California State University, or CSU, anti-discrimination policy. In an open letter signed anonymously by over 80 CSU faculty members, Half declared that the, quote, new policy would unfairly target a minority community for policing and disparate treatment. The addition of the new policy was partially informed by a survey conducted by the caste oppressed led organization Equality Labs. Half questioned the scientific validity of the survey and deemed Equality Labs as, quote unquote, anti Hindu. The half and the CSU faculty signatories were met with widespread criticism on social media for their position opposing the new anti-discrimination policy, with many stating that they are effectively whining about being discriminated against for no longer being able to enact discrimination. Um, so I wanted to cover this story. So background, in case you don't remember, last week we talked about in a very historic uh, um, decision, in a very historic move, um, the CSU system, which I believe has over 20 campuses and is the largest four-year university system in the United States, voted to add caste as a protected category in their anti-discrimination policy. Um, this was um, very... Uh, it was a long fight for the people who were pushing for this to get it, and they won this decision. And so then the Hindu American Foundation was one of the organizations that came out in opposition um, to this policy. And I knew we had to cover this. <laughs> I actually like this. I mean, is I mean, their message is that being anti-caste is anti-Hindu. I agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> this. <laughs> I mean, anti-Hinduism at least, so maybe not anti-Hindu, right? So, I mean, it's very telling. It's very telling how much <laughs> the caste discrimination is based on Hinduism, where you're automatically anti-Hinduism if you're fighting caste discrimination. This is, <laughs> I mean, this is kind of like I don't know the KKK coming out and saying like. You are, you know, fighting racism is discrimination against us, and we were like, yeah, <laughs> true. I, we agree. I mean, did that? I mean, I know that's not how they're framing it. No, but did not they at not all. See, I, I know, you know, but does did they not see that PR wise? That's how it come across. Like you guys, of are just course, they it. know that Armin, because that's why this was signed anonymously. That's why they were I'm too cowardly to even stand behind it, put ten toes down, mm, and say it with their whole like, chest. Because they know, know this comes across they as they, it looks like. Can you just let us be discriminatory? Like it's in our religion. Like you're being, you're discriminating against us by not letting us discriminate against other people. Um, yeah, this is they calling it. Are they called? Did you mention? Yeah. They call, <laughs> Kiki is saying, now we'll hear cries of Hindu phobia. Right. Not exactly. Yeah, this... I, I can get into their actual argument about this if we want. Yeah. Okay. So, but this is, this is very similar to Christians complaining about Christian phobia because we don't, we're like fighting homophobia, right? Like fighting homophobia has been, you know, a lot of Christians complain about this is like us, you know, this is anti Christian discrimination, right? It's just so similar to that. Like, this is, you know, we are fighting one form of bigotry, and this, this entire religious institution or organization is now co complaining about this is discrimination against them because you're like impeding on their right to discriminate against others. Like, it just sounds so similar to that. What do you think? Well, yeah, it really does sound like that. I mean, they were getting absolutely roasted on social media. It was quite delightful. Um, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, Love it. <laughs> what they're saying 
is that the positions from the university or the CSU system and the representatives that they talked to were uninformed or had negative and disparaging stereotypes about Hindus or South Asians in general, and that they oppose this policy because they say that this has a, um, a disparate and discriminatory impact on the South Asian community specifically, because this is identified as a system coming out of South Asia. And they say that the existing policies um, that are already on the books in at CSU regarding pr prohibition against of discrimination on the basis of um, origin, nationality, or um, in race um, should already apply and they should already be appropriate. And so that this addition only serves to target the South Asian community. You know, well, I used to agree with that line of reasoning, right? Because I used to think like, for example, if you have a policy where it specifically tries to mend some of the hurt uh, that Black Americans have faced, historically right because of the generational poverty um of the previous discrimination from you know and and some current ones right um i was like why would you do that why can't you just have policies that in general is helping anybody that is suffering from poverty or other forms of hardship right and if your race or ethnicity um has been has hurt by suffered more from it well the policy that doesn't even highlight the ethnicity or the minority group will automatically benefit you more because you have been hurt more by it so there's no need in in the mentioning of black or i don't know whatever minority group that you belong to you, there's no need of mentioning that in the policy especially given that if you mention that in policy that will cause communities to see each other as enemies even more right however i some by listening to some arguments for i heard like symbolically it makes a difference right to see for a community to feel like there's a healing process going on like to for them to be specifically called out as somebody that needs a wrong has been done against the community that needs to be fixed it, it it's important to do that at least symbolically for the healing process right and i think like over here also symbolically this makes a difference right so you could have a general catch-all policy that just bans all forms of discrimination but i think like given how much ignored how much anti-caste discrimination has been ignored and how much relative to other forms of discrimination it hasn't been taken seriously, having some serious institutions coming that and you know highlighting it symbolically, putting that on their books and mentioning it goes a long way into helping lower caste and outcast people feel like they're now visible, they're being heard, and their cases are being taken seriously. Right? You know what I mean? Like we do have general anti-discrimination policies but we also have policies in places where you have those policies against like highlighting anti-jewish discrimination right why do we have anti-jewish discrimination policies even though other forms of anti-discrimination is supposed to cover that right because we have specifically seen this as such a hot, hot important issue that we want to we want to even if it's symbolic i think there's 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 value in symbolism, right? Symbolism helps you highlight something that needs more attention, right? And I think like having this on the books on such important organization goes beyond the effects of it will be felt beyond these organizations, right? You will, you're worldwide, you're bringing anti-caste discrimination, you, you're highlighting it and you're bringing it up front. So that's, that's why I think like there's value in, in, in having specific policies like this, right? Uh, what do you think? You're muted. Um, I don't think this is symbolic. Um, I think there can be symbolic implications. That's what I said. Yes. Yes. Um, I didn't... But uh, I think I, I am inclined to agree with the people who are um, 
in response to the HAF, what they were saying was there's nothing, um, just how in the United States, um, sex-based discrimination was in anti-discrimination policies for a very long time. It was still necessary to adopt specific um, anti-discrimination policies for the pr protection of people against homophobia and transphobia, even though technically that should be covered under sex-based discrimination. There's still having a policy that um, addresses it with more specificity and can really name it goes a long ways in ensuring that people can have um, what the harms that they experience like redressed appropriately. Um, I, I think um, it was really interesting to me. First of all, the fact that I feel like they really exposed themselves in their own casteist opinions by calling Equality Labs anti-Hindu. So they're calling a Dalit-led organization anti-Hindu for opposing wow. casteism. Like, I feel like that's such a, that's such a telling on yourself. Like, I can promise you that there are dozens of people within that organization or who have participated in it who consider themselves Hindu. <laughs> but yeah, because, you're right. It's a like, I was like, that... what? They're anti-Hindu? Like, that, I, that is um, a reflection of something my Dalit friends wow. tell me is that historically they haven't even been considered fellow Hindus. So I felt like wow. that was a big telling you're on right. yourself moment. <laughs> You're right. That was it's a Dalit. Let it's for people who don't know. Dalits are basically the outcasts, and you're accusing of this thing that is being done by your fellow Indians as anti-Hindu. So you're saying that these people are not Hindu, or not part of like they're being like. So you're shunning them out. Like you are. You're so. That is so true. You're telling on yourself. But you you want to read this tweet because this is very interesting. Oh, this is, is a reporter saying Hindu American Foundation, the advocacy group that filed a lawsuit over my Al Jazeera English story last year, is having a major meltdown and giving legal threats to Cal State for its system wide ban on caste discrimination. Yeah, um, this is so. This is a mess. I I love how we keep putting uh, Ambedkar <laughs> is that's mm -hmm. him, right? Mm -hmm. in the in the cover every time we're talking about anti-caste right because we want to show people like this movement against caste discrimination the greatest force against it has come from india <laughs> okay this is not an anti-indian like <laughs> this anti-indian like discrimination like you know okay like this is this is the symbolism of anti-caste which was born in india okay so shut the hell up over like this false accusations of like racism. I think like, um, the a lot of the criticism by um, the Hindu American Foundation um, didn't do a good job addressing how caste um, is something that it, it pervades so much more than just Hindu society. It pervades all religious communities coming out of the Indian subcontinent. Um, so trying to frame it, trying to take advantage of the fact of like claiming that you're being Hindu phobic or against Hindus by opposing this form of discrimination, um, I think is a real disservice to the millions of other people who experience who aren't Hindu. Um, I feel, I feel like that's a weaponizing of being Hindu, um, or, or a Hindu identity, I mean. Um, and, uh, I think one thing I do find interesting is that they had major criticisms of the data coming from Equality Labs, and they pointed towards a study that was conducted by Carnegie, um, Carnegie Mellon, and I believe also in had some affiliation with the UPenn, um, where they dissected the information the data from Equality Labs and had major criticisms of the way that they conducted their surveys and the problems with their data, which um, I didn't have time to read the full report, but that is something I really want to look into because I do think that there are very legitimate um, criticisms about the conclusions that Equality Labs is reaching, but I also had criticisms and there were also seeming failures within the data from this new report itself. Um, in general, it's an area that needs much further examination in American society. There's not a lot of research on it done lately. So, 
Okay, by the way, I don't think it was fair that right after I said the symbolism matters here that you told me that this is not just symbolism. I wasn't suggesting that this is just symbolism. <laughs> I, did, I, I, did, suggest... I didn't understand you at first. I, I get it now. No, I, I did. Yeah, I was saying that the symbolism matters. Like, uh, that's the that's why I, I see the positive effect of the symbolism here. I wasn't saying that these, this, this policy has, is not going to have any other influence, right? Um, but... <laughs> what is this? Did you highlight this one? Oh, yeah. So Selva Kumar is saying, but her non-resident Indians are incoming. So mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that's really interesting to dissect. Um, and it's a it's a dynamic that I'm still learning to understand. But the contention between how people who actually live in India were born and raised there react to issues surrounding their identity is very different than um, how uh, Indian Americans react to situations. Um, it's, it's a very interesting contention and also oftentimes there's a lot of disagreement about these issues and experiences, um, that I find really interesting to examine. We have a comment oh, on LinkedIn. You. LinkedIn comment. That's fantastic. Christina is, is great. I'll look into the data criticism you're mentioning. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Guys, we're also live on LinkedIn. Look at that. We got LinkedIn comments. Um, you highlighted this one. You wanted to, why did you highlight this one? Oh, this actually was a point that I went on to make. Bengali Hindu is saying, um, basically, Westerners are weaponizing caste against Hindu Americans. Caste exists in other religions, but they are targeting the Hindu community only. Well, this specific policy doesn't mention religion. It was kind of the... Hindu American Foundation that brought religion into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, isn't that telling how how okay? So other religions also have caste system, okay? But the main religion that has caste system and uses the caste discrimination has caste discrimination is Hinduism, and it's telling how you just have an anti caste discrimination policy, and the religion that is like feels offended by it is like <laughs> is the Hindu American Foundation, like. Hmm, why are you specifically offended by it? Like, I think they're telling on themselves. Like, so because the 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 anti caste discrimination policy is just like anti caste discrimination in general, right? Um, but yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki is saying they talked about racial and ethnic profiling, and that's what they've been doing for millennia. Yeah, this well, is this um, is old. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna paint everyone who opposes this policy with that. Yeah, I don't think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's collective. You can't hold people today responsible for the crimes of their ancestor, right? Right. But yeah. Um, so I don't understand this one. And Dutfa is saying, "What is he? What is he saying?" She's oh, saying. this just is just a complaint about the reservation system within um, legislative assembly politics. But it's not relevant to this news. Yeah, right? it's it's yeah, a little yeah. niche. Yeah for this topic. Um, who cares is saying discrimination is wrong unless our religion allows it. Same story for Islam, Christianity, Jews, etc. True. And we got a Twitch comment. We have to highlight the Twitch comments. Yeah, Forever Stormy is saying vast majority of Hindus abroad are upper castes and they go there and pretend there's no caste. Yeah, no, that's just statistically true that most who actually come to North America are upper caste because yeah, yeah, they have a yeah, little more opportunity. Too to leave yeah and all, is this true upper caste uh satish singh is saying upper caste hindus is a powerful lobby in the usa in the past labor party in the uk tried to pass anti-caste laws but they failed oh i'm not familiar with that i did oh. read a piece that i couldn't finish because it would have taken me like over 40 minutes to read the whole thing but it was dissecting the Hindu American foundation for how much they tried to obfuscate the existence of caste um how they're, you know, just criticizing an organization up front for being upper caste led is not something I'm really inclined to um, put a lot of credence to. I don't like the way that's painted. It's like, oh, you you know, you're led by upper castes. You must be bad. I don't like that. But um, yeah, we they're talking yeah, about like, how in textbooks, the Hindu American Foundation was trying to get the word Dalit removed from textbooks, trying to yeah. erase the um, anti-caste teachings of Guru Nanak to um, fuel their narrative that caste was something established by the British, um, and a lot of scathing um, criticism. So it yeah. did lead me to feel like there is a little bit of a problem going on there. 
Yeah, but we have to be careful not to do upper caste discrimination in response to uh, anti caste discrimination. Like, like yeah, the, that's what I just said. Yeah, exactly. So that's I mean, I'm confirming that that's a good point. Like, so make sure like in our fight in our, in our attempt to fight like um, anti dollar discrimination, we, we're not holding every single upper caste member like there are a whole bunch of upper caste people um, who are like fighting all of this nonsense as well. Right. So yeah, we shouldn't, you know, it would be reverse anti caste discrimination. Like, in fact, this article was sent to me by one of my based upper caste friends. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, are, are, we participate, are we participating in caste? Like, we don't want, we don't want equality between castes. Okay. We want the abolishment of caste. Okay. So like this whole idea of referring to people as upper caste or lower caste and as caste, every time I like do it, like, I feel like, like, are we participating in this, like, <laughs> in this, in this categorization? Like, what the hell does it mean for you to be upper caste? You know what I mean? So yeah, we do, like any. We have to like clarify. We're not trying to promote equality between castes and outcasts. Okay, the whole caste system should just be abolished. Like, it shouldn't even exist. Um, yeah, this uh, is Kiki is saying Hindutva opposes including caste and anti-discrimination clause. Also Hindutva. The caste system was introduced by the British. Well, yeah, I don't necessarily like... think that HAF is in, like equivalent to Hindutva. I don't happen based on what I've read, I don't think they're equivalent. Or maybe But what do you think about this? Like this is so cr guys, this is why I'm telling you every anybody who tells you that Armin, why are you talking about Hinduism? You're not from India. The response is like, I know more than most Indians, okay? Me and Susanna know more than most Hindus and more Indians. Because the look at the claim that comes out of the Hindu community and of India is that the caste system was introduced by the British, okay? No, it wasn't, okay? This is like, I know your ancient scripture more than you do if you claim that, okay? There's nothing more Hindu than the caste system, okay? If there's anything that is a ca a Hindu, okay, is the caste system. Everything else is like one, one sex of, like there are, parts of hinduism agrees with it and parts of it doesn't this is the mo one of the most ancient parts of hinduism so it's completely ridiculous for anybody who's anybody anybody who's telling you that the caste system is not based on hinduism uh, is either lying to you or completely ignorant about anything hinduism related and you could completely dismiss any uh, any of their other claims um and yeah, somebody say yeah. Everything was done by the British. Everything bad in India basically happened because of the British or, and the Muslim Empire. And everything good in India is because of Hinduism. You, that's just like how it works. And you highlighted this one. Well, to be fair, I think every bad border was drawn by the British. So I'm not kidding. <laughs> a lot of yeah, them. Yeah. No. No. Well, I didn't. Yeah. Just because I'm saying everything bad didn't happen because of the British, that doesn't mean that I'm not saying that the British <laughs> didn't do anything wrong. They did a lot of things wrong, including the way they draw borders. Like, obviously. That I, is, I think I posted good. in the Atheist Republic International group one time um, something along the lines of like, did the British ever create one good border? And everyone was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, forever Storm every time you see a straight line, if, every time you see a straight line going for a long time, right? Without like going like without like people are like the British drew this. The other day. Like, like, you know how little thought it was put into borders when you see it going just straight for a very, very long time. Like, it's so lazy. But yeah, just, go Just cut it here. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, Forever Stormy is saying, I think we should give Susanna an honorary doctorate for all the research she does. Well, thank oh. you. <laughs> you know, well, I think yeah. obviously I have my own bias and um, sometimes I might be mistaken or some things I might get. I might get things wrong, but I hope it's clear to everyone that I do make a very earnest effort to come with as the best information as possible. You do a great job. Yeah. I'm glad people are recognizing you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is funny. I don't know if people know the reference. Do you know the reference? So Doorknob has saying, what did the British ever done for us? Do you know the reference? I don't actually. This is Monty Python. Wait, I was a Monty Python geek. What is this from the life of Brian? Yeah. I was never Remember, allowed to watch the life of Brian because it's, I was raised Catholic, obviously that's too, way too blasphemous. Yeah. I should watch that, it now though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Watch that. That's a, uh, that's funny. That's a funny reference. Um, cool. So 
Um, we should go to the next news. If you see anything in the live chat while I get the next news, feel free to highlight it. Ooh, this one is too bright. Let me darken. No, we're, I mean, we've been having a lot of really interesting conversations going on in the live chat. So I appreciate everyone. You know, people, they come with a lot of opinions. Some of them are not good, but a lot of people actually like have like pretty thoughtful takes on things. Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.